Renegade Radio Live. www.renegaderadio.co.uk And now the first of the latest series of Checkpoint finds Roger Cook, 20 miles or so from the mouth of the River Thames. This is Tilbury, a grey, desolate place with an evil stench of violence, where local skinheads roam the docklands like cropped rats. So said the Sun newspaper in a special August bank holiday spread entitled Agro-Britain. That report has, however, left a lot more agro in its wake, according to local residents. It's painted their hometown black and left a legacy of misery and, in some cases, fear where none should exist. For a start, while Tilbury is by no means a cosy place, in fact, it's rather flat and dull-looking. To call it grey and desolate with an evil stench of violence would seem to be somewhat overstating the case, as would be the suggestion that skinheads have reached plague proportions. Go down to the dock gates any time after dark, says the sun, and see that the skinhead violence is real. Well, that's where we are now, outside one of Europe's more modern ports, where the security men will tell you that beatings up do happen all right, but only once in a blue moon. So to publicly suggest that Tilbury is some sort of hellhole ruled by tattooed terrors is, say residents, greatly exaggerated, highly offensive and damaging to their community. The locals are furious at quotes like this. In this part of Essex, you're not brought up, you're dragged up. The minute you're born, your fists have got to go up or you don't last long. Or this. On a street, there are no rules. Once a bloke goes down, you're kicking bloody silly. Or this. A really good day for us is a good f***ing beating up a few packies. That sort of thing, quoted by reporter Joe Steeples as being the sentiments of some of Tilbury's youth, hardly does much for the town's reputation. And how the story was apparently set up by the Sun hardly does much to enhance that paper's reputation either, according to Joseph Bird, the local chief superintendent of police. The story, which said the police now thought the skinheads were so evil they kept them under regular surveillance, made some play of an alleged disturbance outside Tilbury docks. Despite the insinuation in the Sun article, it doesn't quite accord with what was reported to me by my officers. It was necessary at about quarter to three on the afternoon of the 27th of July to dispatch three police cars to the bridge near Tilbury Town Railway Station. The staff of the station had heard a commotion and disturbance and fearing that some violence might be building up there, they had reported the matter to the local police station and my officers attended. When they got there, they found a number of skinhead persons, some of them stripped to the waist and some of them waving a Union Jack. They found another person whom they later found was a Sun newspaper reporter and they did in fact find that he had provided the Union Jack and had invited those of the crowd present who had tattoos to reveal those tattoos and to make a row or a disturbance so that they could be photographed in that position. More of how the story was put together was volunteered by some of the skinheads who were actually present or who were quoted in the article. We spoke to most of them and recorded Tony Barker and Sue and Terry Bundock who it seems spend a good deal more time at the local youth centre than they do anywhere else. Well, it was arranged with the reporters that we meet them down the club, have a drink, then, like, you know, give them a story and they'd make it worthwhile for us. We all went in there, like, and they was getting their fags out, buying all the drinks. And after this, like, you know, we'd had, well, more than we would any other afternoon. And they've said, uh, we want some photos. It was a put-up job from the beginning. They even asked us where the pictures should be taken so that they could find the worst place of all. And half the boys never go near the dock. The nearest they get is the station. So they took us down to the train station on top, got us to pose up there, gave us a Union Jack, saying, put your fist out, look evil, and all that growl at the camera, come on, snow. Loving it, all giving it all that. They'd done that, and then they took a few of us down in the car and they interviewed us with a tape light. But they wouldn't let us put our points of view, they were asking certain questions and like changing them so that like some of it come out as if he was a really, you know, really bad. We said we didn't like Pakistanis all that much, but our equate was we wanted to kill them all and all that, exterminate them from the earth and that. But no one said that. And what he didn't mention, there was a black girl with us, one of our friends, like, who was a sort of skinhead girl, like, and she, like, no one, he didn't mention that. 
and all the things that he did mention, like, were bad things, but that's when we said the good things, like, like about old, old age pensioners getting mugged and things like that, well, we think of that, we said we hated it, we think it's diabolical. Didn't mention none of that, and all he mentioned was the bad things about us. Oh, they were filling them with drinks and showing how nice they were, and they seemed really decent blokes. They said that they wouldn't use our names in the quotes, and they did. They took bits out of what we said, and all the boys were fighting to get their words in, so they were saying worse than what they actually do themselves. They just wanted to get their name in, so they were saying something that was absolutely ridiculous. But none of them are violent. If they're provoked, they will fight. But unless they are provoked, none of them go out for trouble. Well, everyone gets in trouble now and then. Speaking personally, I haven't been in trouble for over four years. And, like, most of the others haven't, really. There's only one or two. Renegade Radio Live. www.renegaderadio.co.uk Now we've got Millwall skinheads want to come down because they've had their name in the paper. And they think, like, their reputation's been wrecked and they want to come down to see our boys. And you're just getting kids, jumped up little kids who want to fight just for nothing now because of what was put in the paper. Some of it was too, like, because we said, all right, we're the skinheads, like, and we don't like Pakistanis, like. And, yeah, all right, I'm a West Ham supporter, but I was standing there, like, at work. Someone showed me a paper and nearly had an heart attack. And he'd come out of all this crap. I got stabbed down Millwall a couple of years ago. I've never been to Millwall's ground in my life. West Ham have only ever played there once and I was in Boston at the time. You know what I mean? So how could I have been stabbed down Millwall? Like, he just came out of untold crap about me. We're scared. If our address had gone in there, we would have probably have had people knocking on our door for fights, just to see if we were as hard as we said we were. And I wasn't even a skinhead at the time. I was nine months pregnant with a maternity dress and shoulder length fear. The way it has been printed in the paper is, I've never said it like that. Not at all. They've just changed it right about and made us look like, whoa, villains. Well, aren't you? No, I'm not. Look at me police record, you don't believe me. But surely it's partly or even largely your fault, and you're no angels to start with, are you? Oh, no, we're no angels. None of us say that we are. But we'd, we don't do half of what they've put down. But you shouldn't have got involved. I mean, you were showing off in the end, weren't you? No, we were showing off. Anybody who's going to be offered to put in the paper and get their face in the paper is going to do it. There's, you know, and if someone's offering free drinks, none of those boys have got any money. They're going to take a free drink if it's offered to them. No buy spirits because it's not what they normally drink and they thought it was a good laugh because those fellas would be out of pocket. But it just so happened they brought enough with them to keep going. The other thing that gets up my nose is they're bringing politics into it, saying that we're all members of the National Front or BOM and I voted Conservative anyway, so it's ridiculous. What we was bragging about, you know what I mean, was we're the skinheads and that's it. We wasn't bragging about beating people up on nothing, what he tried to say we was. Because you can ask anyone round here, we wouldn't start on no one for no reason or nothing. Like, if we say anyone, anyone who needed help, even if it's just an ordinary person who needed help in a different way, it don't cost you nothing to help them, does it? Like, what he tried to say is we'd, we'd walk past an old man dying in the streets or something. Well, since that report, I'll we'll go out now drinking, like, and people, like, they jeer at you, like, you know, try and wind you up about it and all that. And as for getting a job in Tilbury or the surrounding areas, there's no chance. If people don't know you, and they've seen that report, well, like, they just think you're aggro now, don't they? They don't want to know you. But wasn't it pretty stupid to get involved in it in the first place? Yeah, but like, after a few beers, I thought, well, oh, what the hell, like, go and do it. Go on, it's a crack, isn't it? Have a laugh. Well, the reporter was so nice, and it's nice as boy, I'll give you a nice write-up, boys. I'll make you look like working-class heroes and all that. You know, and then he's pulling out Union Jacks and asking you... Like, racist questions and everything, and, like, he's just got us all in bother. Gave us a bad name. And Tilbury. Because Tilbury's not had a really good name anyway, but they say, oh, Tilbury, I know that, but now they say, oh, Tilbury, I couldn't live down there, I'm scared of that place. Unless you know what it's like, well, you'd, I suppose you'd believe that report, but it's nothing like that. And neither are the skins themselves, who, in any case, haven't formed any kind of gang with violence in mind. So at least says Eve Sansom. I've known all the boys concerned for many years now. Uh, first of all, I taught them in the local comprehensive school and now I'm warden of the local youth centre. And so I think I can honestly say I, I've got a good idea of what they're really like and they're not the vile animals as painted by Mr Steeples in The Sun. They certainly all have got a record. They're not angels, they've been in trouble. But as far as this youth centre is concerned, they've never given us any cause for concern and have always been very helpful. And certainly 
not the mindless, heartless creeps that Mr. Steeples claims they are. No girl in this centre is afraid of any of the boys. And we have coloured girls here as well, and they're treated with the same respect as the white girls. I think the reason they got involved with this Sun article was that they're all unemployed, the uh, situation locally is very bleak, and frankly, I don't think they saw any other way of making a name for themselves. Suddenly they thought this was their opportunity to become famous, to hit the national press, and they thought everything was going to be rosy. They had no idea the story was going to turn out the way it did, and far from being heroes and big shots locally, they were social outcasts, everybody's enemy. Uh, they were laughed at in pubs, they were thrown out of football clubs, boxing clubs, and every minor crime that is committed, they're questioned about it. And I think they've learnt a very great lesson from the experience. Unfortunately, being made into social outcasts, they've been thrown into a corner on this one. They're under great pressures from the local community, and there's a very real danger that they may become the vile, heartless animals as depicted in the newspaper, because they've nothing else to lose. But it's what the town stands to lose that most worries local councillor Medlock Bibby. The day I read that article in The Sun, I was absolutely disgusted. The Sun calls this a grey, desolate place with an evil stench of violence. Well, that really hurts. I walked the streets in the afternoon and many people in Tilbury came up to me and put the same point of view. I sent a letter off to The Sun along with many more residents in Tilbury. And the letter I got back, well, it was a joke that I got back from them, as far as I'm concerned. It's a great little community. It's a community I'm proud to be associated with. I've lived here all my life. You will go to Tilbury and to the clubs and that. You might find a little bit of problem here, there, the same as you would if you was in Manchester or Leeds. There's problems all over the country. But what the Sun have done, they've caused problems what wasn't there before. They've added fuel to the fire. There's been skirmishes what wasn't there before and are there now. They created these extra problems and they left the people of Tilbury to live with it for a very long while. Renegade Radio Live. www.renegaderadio.co.uk Most people we spoke to in the town insist it's still a nice place and are incensed by the slur they say the sun has cast over them all. Others, a minority, are now more scared to go out at night for fear that violence has actually been created by what was printed in the paper. Well, I don't go at night. I've been caught up with a load of teenagers once and I've never done it since. It's been out since at night. Not on my own, but about um, a dozen of them. They followed me, blew smoke into my face and said, should they pinch my handbag? So I just stop in. I think that piece in the newspaper was all cock and ball, somebody's invention. Because nobody's afraid to go out down here. I'm 62 and I've lived here nearly all my life. And I don't think the lads of Tilbury are bad at all. I mean, there is some, like everywhere else. But if they could get jobs, if they're out of work and they could find jobs, then they'd be OK. I begin to wonder, sometimes I do, every time I walk through the town, I've got to keep looking over my shoulder because it's as simple as that, isn't it? I think that thing in the paper, Black and Tilbury, it made us look terrible, you know? And I mean, I find Tilbury people, well, fine. I mean, I know I've lived here nearly all my life, but people who come here like it here, you know? And we never go out at night, so I wouldn't be frightened to go out because we've got police station the island, haven't we? I think it was a wicked thing to put in the sun because we've got no violence. I'm rather disgusted when it's for printing it. It is designed all of the time, it's not just these lads. Anybody that comes to children now, they think, oh, oh, that's the dump. Let's see where they fight. Go and stir them up and we'll see a show today. But uh, Tilbury's like any other community. Quiet, it's got its little thing that goes on. And the Tilbury that uh, the sun has put in their big spread in the middle pages, I think is nothing like the Tilbury I live in. So I would like, from the sun, a retraction of degrading us as well as they have done. Terry Smith, editor of the Thurrock Gazette, the local newspaper, also takes a pretty dim view of the sun. Their story, he says, bears little resemblance to the Tilbury he's been covering for the past ten years. If there had been a skinhead problem here, 
of the magnitude that the sun makes out, then we would have had that in our paper. We would have reflected that. Certainly there is no large-scale gang warfare. I am convinced in my own mind that my staff would have found it had it have been there, and as they haven't found it, it wasn't there. As a result of that article, there was a lot of trouble locally, and there was a lot of upset with the press, and we are finding that it's reflecting on us very badly indeed. The problem is that the local people know exactly what went on, and they know that the sun is to blame, and yet they're tarring us with the same brush. The years that we've taken to build up a, a reputation for good and accurate reporting, this is wiped away with one story that appeared in the sun. To me, it's a great concern, even that there should be a suspicion that they have invented a story. And when I hear that the police have got the evidence that they have, then it upsets me very much that anybody should invent a story, then that is really bad. We're getting to a really bad state. As are some parts of the borough itself following the publication of The Sun Spread. Renegade Radio Live. www.renegaderadio.co.uk One of those who appeared in it as one of Tilbury's hard men is 17-year-old Tony Barker. He was subsequently followed to the Bull Public House in Little Thurrock by members of a rival group called the Soul Boys. Well, I was in the pub, like, and I went to the toilet. Like, and those guys just come in, like, never seen them before, like, and I just didn't think nothing of it, like, and one of them sort of said, come on, mate, me and you will have a fight. I said, what, like? He said, come on, me and you will have a fight. I said, what are you on about? He said, you will come, me and you go outside. So I thought, well, he's definitely he's got something against me, honey. So I said, well, come on in. I went to go outside, but he just turned around and hit me. So I started rearing him, like, we started having rearing him. And when I was fighting, one of these guys has just bit my ear off, like, and um, it was hanging off, like. So I ran out into the pub, like, blood started coming down on me face, and these guys had come towards me, like, and started stoning into me, so I started rearing him, like. Next thing, the old pub's just erupted and come towards me, like, they all sort of seemed to be together, like, because there's, well, there's all the same kind, all sort of soul boys, like, and they knew I was a skinhead, like, I was the only skinhead in there. And this bloke ran full of a glass, right, and just cut me down the face, like, and it's given me an inch and a half scar that I'll always have now, just for, just for no reason as far as I'm concerned, you know what I mean? And two of me mates come running through the door, they've seen what's happening, they've grabbed me and dragged me outside. Well, when I got dragged out of the pub, they all come around from the other side of the pub, all their soul boys, and they all had, all their chairs and that, and one of them threw a chair at this skinhead, I'll see this skinhead duck, like, and it's gone straight through the window, and all the soul boys were throwing glasses, trying to throw things through the windows at us, like, and like, I was in no state to do anything, like, I mean, he might drag me up the road, like, say, come on quick, I'll try and get you to hospital. But within seconds, like, the police come, like, and they said they're calling ambulance, they called an ambulance for me, like, and I got to the hospital, got stitched up, I just got released from hospital about half past two in the morning, and I got took straight down a police cell, stuck in the cells to about three o'clock the next day, and they charged me for criminal damage. But it could have been me, I was out of it, and I'm a debt to the world. It's definitely the soul boys who smashed the bozer up. And smashed up it was. This immaculately kept pub was attacked with every available bit of ammunition, chairs, stones, bottles, and pieces of scrap iron from a nearby totter's yard. Landlord Wally Twidell. All you could see was just real vandalism at its worst. There's nothing much more you can do about it, except clear up, get the police to keep the people off the street and clear up. The lads came in to look for this particular skinhead, found him, had a guard him, and he threw out and run out of the place, and they followed him. Then the staff shut the doors to keep that element completely out. Whether it annoyed them because they couldn't do any more damage to the lad that they did do, which was quite considerable, because I saw all the blood outside, what they'd done to him, and because they couldn't get back in, they just stove all the windows in. Didn't stop at the glass, just smashed all the woodwork, doors, door panels. Don't think these lads really are sensible enough to really know how much havoc they left behind. And there could have been a lot of damage. I mean, you get throwing pieces of gutter in, 18 inches to two foot long cast iron guttering and throwing it See, throwing it through the windows and smashing bottles the other side of the counter. If one of the staff or anybody got hit with it, they could, it could have been a really terrible. I mean, it could have been, people could have been disfigured for life. I've had this pub 
for 19 years up to that incident, and I've never, in all that time, had anything like that. Well, I do think the son should take some responsibility for it, because, as far as I'm concerned, they published the article, and it seems to have stemmed from that. Whether it was an outside element came in or not, I wouldn't like to categorically say. But what I would say is that I don't think for one moment we would have had this if it hadn't been for that stupid article. I just feel, in, in a way, a little bit sad that, that people should set these people up, particularly responsible people like journalists that surely do know that they do stand a chance of setting something up if they don't take a little bit more consideration. And Police Chief Superintendent Bird, who may not always see eye to eye with Wally Twydell, certainly does on this issue. He thinks the son had little regard for the consequences of what was printed and gave an impression of Tilbury in general, which is very far from the truth. Although it's true to say that over the past few years there have been a very small number of incidents concerning local youths and seamen, or for that matter local youths and coloured people, I will emphasise that the number is indeed small and is in no way exaggerated compared with the size of the local community. There is no problem. I should be sad indeed if I thought that in Tilbury, or for that matter in any part of the Grace Police Division, people were afraid to walk the streets for fear of the smell of life. Renegade Radio Live www.renegaderadio.co.uk